Hey everyone, it's me Geeky and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would do something a little bit different because the last few videos have been haul videos, <laughs> surprisingly. So I thought it would be fun, a fun idea to do some recommendation videos as I have been collecting for a fair few years now and I feel like it would be fun to recommend you some of my favourite current reads and maybe some of my favourite older reads that I've read in the past but I put a poll out on Instagram a little while ago to ask you guys' opinion on some video ideas and I know that the Jose and Shodo recommendations video was one that was really light so I hope that this is going to be helpful for you but before we get started don't forget to give this video a like, comment and subscribe because it helps me know that you guys are enjoying my videos and yes I can make more content like this. So I recently brought kind of like a notebook or a journal where I wanted to do my manga kind of like a manga reading journal which will hopefully help with future first impressions or reviews because I always end up forgetting like what I've read even though I might have really enjoyed something I don't really organize my thoughts and put it down on paper to speak to you guys about it which kind of sucks because there's been so many series that I've genuinely really really enjoyed but just haven't done first impressions because I'm not very good at articulating my feelings or explaining um, actual series themselves so I'm hoping to get a little bit better with that by journaling about it so hopefully I'll be able to churn out some more videos with recommendations for maybe Shoujo, Jose, Seinen, Shonen, <laughs> all of the above um, so yeah so hopefully I'll be able to do that fingers crossed. So I thought I would start off with the Shoujo and Jose because that is a demographic that I've been collecting for such a long time. In fact, that was what I started with. I actually started with Fruits Basket way back in the day in 2009. So yeah, Shoujo is kind of like my roots. And then I just jumped down the rabbit hole and ended up enjoying a lot of a lot more other stuff. <laughs> but with regards to the actual recommendations, honestly, <laughs> I thought I would keep it a little bit more simple. So these are Shoujo series and Jose series that have been out within the last couple of years. One of them might have been started maybe a few years prior to that, but I wanted to include it because it's such a great series and it's just something that I feel like uh, the majority of readers or watchers of my channel would enjoy um, and also readers that enjoy shonen um, series and possibly seinen series would enjoy that particular series um, but yeah I've got one two three four five different series five different series to recommend you guys hopefully I don't babble on too much but let's kick it off the first series that I'm going to recommend you actually isn't a series it's an author and that is the author Ayosaki Saka now Ayosaki Saka has currently got three series released in English all published by this media and the first one being strobe edge this one is complete at 10 volumes i personally have it in my collection and have thoroughly enjoyed this particular read i know there are a couple of volumes of this that are out of print so this one's kind of a bit of an iffy one to recommend however i'm not necessarily recommending you this particular series however ayosaki saka as a mangaka in general this particular series follows this girl on the front called uh, Nina Ko and she's kind of on a journey of first love kind of self-discovery kind of situation. She finds herself falling in love with a guy called Ren Ichinose and he kind of has a girlfriend already so it navigates the trials and tribulations of young teen love <laughs> which could kind of be very relatable for anybody of that age obviously I'm in my late 20s now so it's not necessarily re relatable for 
for me. However, I really, really genuinely enjoyed this series. It's not going to be a series for everybody because of the fact that Ninako is crushing on somebody that already has a girlfriend. However, I feel how Ayosaki Saka actually addresses the situation at hand and it all kind of comes head to head in somewhere in the middle of the series how it's addressed and how it's not brushed over but how situations move on from there and how Ren Ijinose kind of grows up as a character is absolutely amazing it it shows very good character development and the troubles of being a young teen so it's definitely worth the pick up definitely worth the read if you are a shoujo lover i'm not sure if i've actually described that one very well but i don't want to give too much away because of it's a romance and i find that like with romances once you kind of know um certain plot points it's kind of more or less the same with every series by the end of the 10th volume i honestly was wanting more but it's definitely worth the pick up if you can get hold of i don't think unfortunately this is available digitally i haven't seen it on um kindle unlimited or kindle in fact for purchase however it's definitely worth the pick up or at least look at if you can find it cheap but yeah that is the first one by Ayosaki Saka. Following on with the Ayosaki Saka, the next one is Alhara Ride or Blue Spring Ride I believe it's also known as. Now this follows Futaba which is this girl on the front and she has a crush on this guy called Ko which is this guy on the back here. They go to meet in the park at a certain time at at a date because Ko wants to confess his feelings to Futaba however something happens and he just completely disappears from her life and there's no explanation given as to why he just literally disappears kind of ditches her like ghosts her whatever you want to call it but years later she ends up in high school and a guy with the same first name ends up being in that high school however he's not the same Ko, who Futaba remembers, he's very cold to her, very distant, and she doesn't know the reason why. That's kind of where the story kicks off, and we learn more about Ko as to why he completely disappeared and the reason why he gives Futaba the cold shoulder. And again, like with Strobedge, funny enough, this particular series has a similar situation where he is kind of seeing somebody already however Ko is not happy in his life at that particular moment in time he's not smiling he's not happy he just doesn't really enjoy his his life and Futaba kind of changes that his everyday life and he starts to smile and his friends start to notice it more and it's just such a beautiful heartwarming story now some people don't really like this series either but they prefer it over strobe edge and for me if i'm being honest i have all 13 volumes i forgot to say it is complete at 13 volumes as well so it's nice short one along with strobe edge not too much of a financial commitment but with Strobe Edge, only if you can find Volume 6. Volume 6 is a bloody nightmare to pick up. But if you can find it, it's a short and cheap series. <laughs> but if you can't, then it's not. Honestly, this is such a cute shoujo, cute high school romance, kind of come of age kind of story. And it's one that any fluffy shoujo reader would enjoy reading. <laughs> so the final Ayosaki Saka series that I'm recommending to you guys is Love Me Lovely Not Again by Ayosaki Saka. Now this is her most recent work, again published by Viz Media. Also, can we just appreciate these gorgeous pastel covers? They are absolutely beautiful. Now this follows two young girls, um, Yuna and Akari on the front here, I can't remember which one's which, and this is about their first love. Now one of these characters prefers a fairy tale type romance she's read so much shoujo manga that she feels that she's gonna have one of those absolutely beautiful fairy tale whirlwind of a romance 
and one day her Prince Charming's just gonna come along and she's gonna know who that person is and just fall head over heels in love. And the other girl, this one on the front, doesn't believe in that at all. She believes she's more of like a go-getter. She'll go and find love herself rather than wait for it to kind of fall into her lap, unlike Yuna. But this is kind of their their way of navigating their teenage lives and finding their first love. I absolutely love reading the author's notes in this series because Ayosaki Saka actually says in one of her uh, author notes that she wanted to show her audience that there is no one set way to fall in love and have a romance. Like, there's not any written rules. Anybody can fall in love just because it's not the same way one person would fall in love doesn't mean it's wrong everybody has their own unique way and that's what makes it such a beautiful experience and i just absolutely adored her little comment in there because for a young reader that must be really important to hear like you don't have to be like everybody else if it takes you a little bit longer to find somebody that you love it's no problem like it'll happen eventually but it doesn't matter as long as you're happy and I really appreciate how Ayosaki Saka has put that in her notes it was such so heartwarming to read particularly because obviously she has primarily a younger uh, audience and it was just yeah it was so lovely but there is kind of a little situation that happens at the end of volume one that not everybody is a fan of now I don't want to say what that is because that would be a spoiler however this for me from what i've read so far is probably my favorite series by ayosaki saka because it follows two main characters rather than one definitely gives more dynamic to the series because you get a little bit more of an expansion in the main character cast and i really do genuinely appreciate it it's very well written it's currently ongoing as well i believe we're up to volume eight on the English release but I'm not entirely sure how far we are behind Japan I believe it's finished but yeah I definitely recommend this I just recommend Ayosaki Saga as a mangaka in general she does some fantastic shoujo manga and the series always really beautifully drawn heartwarming very heartfelt and the romances for somebody of that age I know if I was a teen a young teen reading this I would feel like I would be able to relate to the series which is really cute but even as a grown-ass woman in her late 20s oh, 28 I'm so old <laughs> I can still somewhat relate to that kind of refreshing spring feeling romance it's just beautiful and all of her series are beautiful so i would highly recommend any all of the above all of the above strobe edge aha ride or love me love me not i do believe that ayosaki Saka is writing another series so i'm hoping that that one gets translated to english because it's actually anything by Ayosaki Saga I absolutely love so I hope that will be a really good series as well. So for my next shoujo recommendation would be Yona of the Dawn. Now oh my goodness guys if you are a lover of fantasy, romance, politically heavy, um, historical romance series then you will eat this up for breakfast honestly guys this is fantastic it kind of gives me the vibes of uh, the old school Fushigi Yugi so if you have read Fushigi Yugi by uh, Yuatase it kind of gives me that vibes purely because of the setting of the series but this series follows young Yona she's celebrating her 16th birthday in the kingdom and unfortunately a very upsetting and tragic event happens to her on that particular day somebody murders her father and basically blames it on her best friend or her close friend which also happens to be her bodyguard Huck and she finds herself fleeing for her life fleeing the kingdom and from there she has to set out on a journey to find four dragons with four different powers to kind of bring her bring her back to the kingdom 
and on this journey she meets so many fantastically unique people in her kingdom. She goes from a very very weak female lead character to a very strong female lead. Now if you guys have been following my channel for a while you know that I'm actually all for that. I love a beautiful strong female lead like no thank you to those little weak female leads we need some good kick-ass female lead characters and yona is definitely one of them i love huck huck is absolutely gorgeous he's her best friend her bodyguard and he accompanies her around the kingdom as she tries to find her way back and basically take back her kingdom for herself now this series is actually an ongoing series it's a pretty long one we are currently sitting at i believe 30 to 31 volumes out in english and it is still ongoing so if you are new to manga this one's more of a kind of not long slog because i wouldn't call it a slog to get through but it's definitely one that's going to cost you a little bit more in the wallet if you get me so if you're not entirely sure if you like that series definitely do a little bit of research before but this is such a beautifully drawn series did i say who it's from i don't know the author of this series is mizuho kusanagi i believe that's how you say say her name please correct me if i'm wrong because i'm really pants when it comes to japanese names you guys know what i'm like right <laughs> but this is such a beautifully political politically heavy romance action series we see yona go from different parts of her kingdom having to kind of fix situations that her father the previous king kind of let slip she has to find food for a part of her country that is very dry and barren in terms of food and she has to fight or go up against some foreign lands from invading her country this is such honestly this is such a great series Ooh, doop, doop. <laughs> i definitely feel that anybody that predominantly reads shonen that would like to dip their toes into shoujo would definitely enjoy this it's got a good mix of action romance politically heavy um themes in here it's just really well written and i would 100% recommend you guys to pick this up so the next three are my jose recommendations now the first one being one that i hauled like in my previous video so if you've watched that you're probably gonna recognize this one but the first one being yakuza lover by nozumi mino now this one guys let me tell you something if you are a fan of smut you are going to love this series <laughs> as you guys know i am the self-proclaimed queen of smut <laughs> and this one did not disappoint me honestly this follows a young girl called yuri sorry i always forget names and she is a college student yuri is a college student and she's at a party she ends up having to try and save her friend from a bit of a sticky situation where there's drugs involved i think the guy in this is a i think the guy was trying to drug her or something i can't remember exactly off the top of my head but there was drugs involved in this situation and yuri kind of as a bit of a backbone and tries to push this guy away from her friend and tries to get her out of the situation because she's got a bit of a fiery temper as yuri and as she does that the guy on the front here called toshiomi toshiomi oya i think that's his name guys i'm sorry i'm not good with names you guys know that <laughs> he comes into the room and saves Yuri and it turns out that that particular guy is the head of the Yakuza syndicate and from there we go very quickly into them to having a romance and Yuri finds out very quickly that Oya is actually Yakuza they get pretty balls deep if you get what I'm saying in <laughs> in their relationship very quickly when Oya uh, goes to see Yuri or Yuri goes to see Oya to return a jacket 
something happens and um, Oya is injured and things move very quickly on from there. Let me just say, this is rated mature and there is a very good reason for this. This is not for anybody under 16, guys. We have got a lot of smexy heated scenes and boy, just thinking about it is getting me hot and sweaty, if you know what I mean. <laughs> But for me personally, I absolutely love Yakuza series or anything to do with Yakuza. Also, I'm like a sexy guy with uh, sexy tattoos, if you know what I mean. So this was definitely up my street. So if you like that type of thing, you definitely need to get on this. But <laughs> this is a newer series and we've only got, in the UK, we've only got volume 1 out. However, volume 2, I believe, is out in the US so it's one that doesn't really take too much catching up on to be up to date it's definitely worth the read again tri little trigger warning for you guys here though if you are sensitive to yakuza or gang type themes with violence or drug related stuff then definitely stay away from this because this series is going to have that in abundance because it is about yakuza however if that doesn't put you off definitely give it a go i highly recommend it there is a slight age gap within this series however yuri is a college student so it's not really weird unlike some of the other age gap romances we see in shoujo some of them are like teenagers and then they're guys that are like 10 years older yuri is actually a college student and Oya is a little bit older. I think he's in either his late 20s or his early 30s. Um, so there is that age difference, but again, they are both adults, so it's not too much of a big deal. But this, honestly, this series is so good. And Caitlin really enjoyed it as well from Kate Tins Does Manga. Yeah, if you're looking for something that's a little bit spicy, a little bit saucy, definitely give it a go it's definitely worth the pick up and if you do give it a go let me know what you think in the comment section down below also let me know what you think if you have read it and what do you think of our our yakuza leaders tattoos he's pretty hot guys isn't he yes he is also i do apologize guys if i sound a bit weird i kind of got a cold and when i talk too much i end up losing my voice and i'm slowly starting to lose my voice so i hope i can get through the last two series without completely losing my voice i stupidly forgot to grab a glass of water Ugh, i don't know why i forgot i forgot to do that but there we go <laughs> next up for my jose recommendations would have to be sign of affection now honestly guys this is by the the artist and writer duo su morishita this series is beautiful i kid you not guys if you have not heard of this series and are interested in a beautiful romance definitely definitely pick this up sue morishita is the artist duo that also done uh where is it also done shortcake cake so if you wonder why this art style looks familiar it's because it's the same author and artist duo that done shortcake cake which i'm currently reading and very much enjoying as well so i'm sure you're wondering what this series is about now this follows our young lady called yuki she is a college student and she is in fact deaf so one day she is riding on the train in Tokyo and a foreigner comes up and asks her for some directions unfortunately she can't talk nor can she understand what he is saying because she is deaf and she tries to communicate that over to him but obviously the foreigner isn't understanding then steps in this handsome specimen I believe his name is Itsuomi, 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 I think. Names, I don't get guys. <laughs> he steps in and tells the directions to the foreigner. From there he starts to talk to our young lady Yuki and he realises that she obviously can't speak to him and she become and he becomes sorry very curious about Yuki and He's very adept with languages and sign language is one language 
that he doesn't understand so in their first interaction Yuki signs to him and he becomes very curious about that and about her in general and they then start to get to know each other and as they become to get to know each other uh, Yuki starts to realise that she kind of has feelings for Itsumi and it's just so beautiful. I absolutely adore this series so far. It's currently got three volumes out and it is on ongoing however I believe I've read somewhere that it's currently on hiatus for a little while so I do hope that it comes back soon because it's absolutely gorgeous. I absolutely love how Yuki is quite a shy type person and she's kind of timid about letting other people into her world because the only thing that she can hear is kind of static she can't hear people talking it's just a lot of noise and she can't make out what it is she does have hearing aids but this series is really about Yuki opening up and allowing Itsumi into her world you know taking that leap of faith and allowing him in and it's so well done the first two volumes were absolutely beautiful I love where this series is going it's definitely worth the pick up if you want a beautiful romance or a beautiful friendship because at the moment it's a beautiful friendship and I can't wait to see where this series goes and how Sumurashita actually progresses the story, progresses the romance between these two. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I also love how we are getting representation in the manga community from the publishers at the moment. Like, it's absolutely brilliant. The next one is another one where it's got a representation of some sort of disability. But honestly, this is so, so beautiful and I can't wait to see what happens next. So I would definitely highly, highly recommend you guys this series. It's one of those series that will tug at your heartstrings and make it melt. Like, will just literally make you melt. And the art style is gorgeous. I want to show you an art style. I didn't show you art style for any of the other ones. But, yeah, let me see if I can... Can you guys see that? I hope you guys can see that but it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a high recommendation for me it's absolutely stunning I also like in the actually I also like in the back of the book how they give you kind of a commentary like translate translation notes and also a little interview with how Sue Morishita came up with the idea and how she done how they done their research into sign language and how they found that it, a little bit difficult to communicate the signs so they worked really really hard to make sure that the sign language the the emphasis was put on the sign language and it came across really well and it was so it was such a nice commentary in the back of the book it's definitely worth the read as well I love I also love the commentary and how it they said that each country have a, has a different sign language and it actually says here that uh, Japan has one of the most ex uh, expressive form of sign language and it was just, it was so sweet and I felt like I learned so so much when I read that little interview. So definitely read the interview if you've got this and you haven't but yeah I definitely recommend this, it's such a beautiful story and I can't wait to see where this goes. So the final recommendation is also a Jose and also a series about somebody that has a disability and that is Perfect World by Rei Aragawa. Now this series pulls at my heartstrings left right and centre guys honestly and if any of you have read them at home you will know what I mean. Now this series follows our young lady on the front here. She's a 26 year old office worker, her name is Sugumi and she meets her high school crush Itsuki at a kind of uh, office meeting, kind of like a lunch uh, dinner kind of situation. It's been a while since she has seen Itsuki and during the meeting Itsuki goes to leave and she finds out that Itsuki has actually had an awful accident and has ended up in a wheelchair. He's got a spinal cord injury so it prevents him from being able to walk and that's when their kind of 
friendship into romance situation kind of um, occurs. However, Isuki is adamant that he does not want to have a girlfriend. He doesn't want to put um, the burden of his injuries onto somebody. So he is a very closed off person at that moment in time. However, uh, Sugumi kind of breaks down those barriers. That icy wall starts to melt because of uh, Sugumi and they end up getting together that is in the first volume so that's not too much of a spoiler guys however it isn't all sunshine and rainbows the reality of the situation is evidently clear and people are very much against the romance and the relationship and they really do make their feelings known and it's quite hard to read at times however it's something that we should all take a look at a good look at ourselves because there are moments in this series where it really makes you stop and think like the first volume had um sugumi sugumi yeah sugumi's office workers talking crap about itsuki behind his back saying stuff like oh he's a really cute guy it's such a shame that he's in a wheelchair and it's like ugh ugh Ugh, why would you say that for it doesn't matter if the dude's in a wheelchair like he's a still a nice guy like it doesn't matter if somebody has a disability do you know what I mean like no fuck you do you know what I mean like it was really uncomfortable to read but unfortunately in society that prejudice that uncomfortable feeling happens every single day and it's very I think it's very important to read and learn about that from a wheelchair, wheelchair user's perspective so I'm really really personally intrigued to see where this series goes but it's definitely a high recommendation from me. I will say there are some very 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 sensitive subjects in here and it's a series that makes you think about our society and how they treat disabled people in general and honestly guys looking at this series from that kind of perspective how the how disabled people are treated is absolutely shocking it's so awful like they're kind of reading this series kind of makes you think that they're kind of not really thought of at all in everyday life and when um Isuki tries to make changes because he's an architect people just aren't interested they're like oh it's going to cost too much money to just get a simple ramp and it's just really awful to sit and read that sort of stuff but unfortunately that happens in day-to-day -day life on a daily basis but actually being confronted um with it in the series is really shocking and it does make you think a lot about society in general but overall guys this series has been such an emotional read so far we are currently at i believe eight seven or eight volumes deep and i believe this finishes in japan at 13 or 40 volumes again i'll put it somewhere on the screen and we've got a little bit of way to go until this series finishes but going back to the actual series itself Sugumi has a lot of troubles herself with family members not being well and not approving of her and Itsuki's a relationship. So far Itsuki and Sugumi kind of don't really tend to have luck in their relationship but hopefully it will pick up as the volumes go on. But this is a high recommendation for me guys like seriously give this a read. It's such an amazing series. I know maybe some people might not enjoy it because of the content that's in there. Some of it is awful to read, particularly when they are being cruel to Sugumi just because, no, Itsuki, sorry, just because he's in a wheelchair. Like, it is uncomfortable at times to read, but I just, I, this just melts my heart. Like, it pulls on my heartstrings and I can't help but feel something when I read this. Sometimes I want to cry, sometimes I want to smile, sometimes I want to throw the bloody thing across the room because the, all the people inside it are pissing me off because they're so nasty. But it definitely makes me feel something and I hope that this series makes you feel something, good or bad. But it's, it's, 
it's such an amazing series and I would definitely highly recommend you pick it up. So yeah guys, these are my recommendations for Chojo and Jose series. I feel like I covered a good spectrum and range of series. I hope you guys agree. So this might be for beginners, it might be for more veteran collectors if you know what I mean. <laughs> but I definitely feel like I covered quite a few um, genres within the demographic I believe. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> but yeah, out of all of them I think my favourite, personal favourite to recommend would probably be a sign of affection just because it's so cute and the relationship looks to be such a cute little relationship and I can't wait to see what happens with them honestly <laughs> but yeah guys let me know what you think of this video let me know if you want to see more of these types of videos because I kind of had fun doing this I also hope that I didn't talk too much guys let me know if you feel that I talked a little bit too much in this if I if you want me to condense my recommendations down or if you prefer like this kind of chatty kind of recommendations let me know in the comment section down below because I do want to bring more content to you guys and I would love to bring more recommendation videos again I'm not very good at art articulating my words so I do hope that you don't mind and I hope that I didn't overkill this recommendation video by talking too much Yee, sorry <laughs> But yeah guys, let me know some of your favourite Jose and Shoujo series, what would you recommend me, what would you recommend the community, let me know down below in the comment section, I would absolutely love to hear your recommendations, I always like snooping down at the re recommendations anyway, if you guys throw anything down there, so definitely do, because I'm always looking personally for a good Shoujo or a Jose or a good smart. You guys know what I mean, the self-proclaimed smut queen. <laughs> I don't know if I should use that title. I feel like that's going to come back to haunt me at one of these days, but oh well. <laughs> also, don't forget, I've got uh, affiliate links down in the comment section down below. So if you would like to support the channel, um, yeah, please use the links. It comes at no cost, no extra cost to yourself. So yeah, until next time, guys. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>